Now that you have assembled the DLCO simulator, it is time to do the actual DLCO testing. Typically, you will be testing low, middle, or high DL ranges or a combination therein. For each range tested, we suggest a set of three to five trials. Each set of trials, then, will be performed with different leader syringe settings. For example, if you are testing medium and high ranges, you will start by testing the medium range, performing three to five tests at three liters, three to five at four liters, and three to five at five liters. Then, you will do a series of high range tests, again, with three to five tests at three liters, three to five tests at four liters, and three to five at five liters. In total, for testing both middle and high ranges, you would potentially have 30 sets of test results with which to make a final assessment of the performance of your DLCO device. The number of tests performed and the volume settings are ultimately a decision made by each pulmonary function laboratory. Understanding your equipment variance is key to making this decision. This is a good time to verify all environmental conditions, such as room temperature, barometric pressure, and humidity. Verify user-defined setup screens. Calibrate your DLCO device prior to connecting it to the simulator per the manufacturer's recommendations. Position the simulator such that you can get a good connection between the simulator's large port and the mouthpiece of your DLCO device. To ensure the most accurate test results, the distance between the two systems should be as small as possible, which minimizes dead space. Also, the surface of the implement used for the actual connection should be smooth. Don't connect the two machines until after you've done a trial run of the testing process. Ideally, breath hold time should be between 9 and 11 seconds. When you go through the simulation trial run, pay close attention to the timing so that when you perform the actual tests, incorrect breath hold times won't necessitate additional testing. Evaluate the individual test results as they are calculated and stored in EasyLab QC, rather than waiting until after you've performed all 30 tests. That way, if a problem is identified, you can troubleshoot and make necessary corrections early on, then start the testing again, potentially avoiding having to repeat the entire test series. First, you flush the standardized gas syringe, the small one, five times. This should be done at the start of each simulation testing session and whenever you change gases. You do not, however, need to flush the syringe between individual tests during a given session when not changing gases. One end of the pressure regulator should be attached to the gas cylinder, with the other end attached to the simulator's gas connector port. Make sure that the connections are secure, but be careful not to apply excessive force to them. Turn the large valve, or valve 1, counterclockwise. This should point one end of the valve's arrow to the large syringe and the other end to the DLCO connector port. You'll leave valve 1 in this position for the entire flushing process. Close the gas valve, the small two-pronged valve with the words open and close nearby. Push down the black button, allowing gas to flow into the small syringe, stopping at the 2.3 liter mark. Then turn the gas valve to the open position. Push the plunger all the way in, forcing the air out of the syringe. Now, with the plunger all the way in, close the small two-pronged valve. Push the black button valve down allowing the small syringe to be filled up with approximately 2.3 liters of gas. Watch closely, not allowing in much more than 2.3 liters. You can measure the amount of gas in the syringe by the markings visible on the syringe's plunger as the gas filling the syringe pushes it out. If you overfill the syringe, quickly turn the two-pronged valve to open. This will relieve some of the pressure on the standardized gas syringe by allowing gas to be released via the venting port, situated on the manifold, between the large port and the gas connection port. Do not overfill the syringe, as doing so can damage the device. With the syringe filled with approximately 2.3 liters, open the small valve again. Push the syringe's plunger all the way in, emptying the syringe a second time. This completes the first of the flush cycles, Repeat the process, starting with the two-pronged valve in the closed position. Push the black button valve down, allowing approximately 2.3 liters of gas into the standardized gas syringe. Then turn the two-pronged valve to the open position. Push the syringe's plunger all the way in. Then close the small valve, and you've completed the second syringe flush. Continue until you have completed five flushes. Upon the completion of the fifth flush, close the small valve one more time. Then,
push the black button to fill the syringe with 2.3 liters one last time. This leaves the DLCO simulator ready for the first test. Before starting the testing, though, we'll review the flushing process once more. With the large valve turned such that its arrows are pointing to your DLCO device and the large syringe, you'll close the other, smaller gas valve. Then, push down the black button, allowing gas to flow into the small syringe, stopping at its 2.3 liter hash mark. Next, you'll open the small gas valve, push the plunger all the way in, then set the small valve back to the closed position. You'll then push the black button, allowing 2.3 liters of gas into the small syringe. Open the small valve once more, then push the plunger all the way in, emptying the gas syringe.